Hi, welcome to a short video on the practical usage of Microsoft Power Query and Power Pivot. In this video, I'd like to show you how you can compute product-wise YTD revenue from a matrix-like or a crash to or a cross tabular data set. For other MS Excel solutions, you may visit my website ashishmathur.com. Okay, so here's what my data looks like. It's a matrix-like data layout wherein I have all my products name listed down in column A and I have one column each for budget actual. So that's for April, that's for May and that's for June. Right? So as you can observe, for every single month I have two sub columns, one for budget, the other for actual. Now from this data set, I actually want my expected solution to look something like this. In a cell, I should be able to choose any month that I wish to. Let's say I've chosen May for now. For the month of May, I should get a listing of all my products over here. And for every product, I'd like to know what the YTD budget is and what the YTD actual is. Let me just run you by how exactly did I get the numbers for product B. So for product B, the YTD budget is 6. Why 6? Because if I've chosen the month as May, I need to add the numbers for the for two months, April and May. So for product B, the budget April is 4 and the budget May is 2. So 4 plus 2 gets me 6 there. Likewise, for YTD actual for product B, will be 4 here plus 1 here, which is 5. One last example, for product E, YTD actual is 14. So that's 6 here plus 8 over here, that's 14. Now I'd like to generate this, da this data set from my raw data over here. Now I've been able to solve this problem with the help of using Microsoft Power Query as well as the Power Pivot. So here's what I did. I selected the data here. I went to Power Query from table. Where is the data? A3 to G8, my table has headers. I click on OK. And first and foremost, I really would like to unpivot or depivot this data. So I select, press the shift key, select till here, right click, unpivot my columns. And you'll notice in the very same column, I have budget or actual as well as the month a space between them. I'd like to essentially split this column wherever I find a space. So I choose my delimiter as space here, click on OK. And I now got the four columns that I wanted. I'll just give some meaningful headings over here instead. So let's just call this attribute here. Let's call this month over here. Now let's give this table a meaningful name. Let's call it sales data. And I'd like to load this to the power pivot. So I say only create connection and add this data to the data model. I click on load. On the right hand side, it tells me 20 rows have been loaded to the power pivot. Just to quickly verify whether that's happened or not, under power pivot, I click on manage. I'll see a tab there called sales data. Now, you'll observe that in my expected result over here, I actually want the month name to be um, the user input. And therefore, I need to have a column of dates in my power pivot. So what I'll do actually over here is I'll create a column of dates over here by simply writing a formula in a calculated column that says equal to one concatenate that with the month column and since I do not know which year this data is for I'm assuming it's for the year 2015 when I enter I get left aligned dates telling me it's not a date entry furthermore the data type over here also tells me it's a uh, auto text date so I simply multiply these this entire result with number one and I format this as now a date string I also get time values there by default which I do not need so I can simply choose this date format and let me give it a meaningful name let's say dates okay one more thing that I observe over here is that my values are towards the left which means that the data type is text over here now what I'd like to do is obviously convert them to numbers because I'll need to perform calculations on this column. So I close the window here. I go back to my workbook query there. And over here it says data type is any. I need to tell it that it's actually a whole number. Now once that's done, I say close and load. The data is reloading into the power pivot model. If I go back over there, you'll see the numbers have become right line and the data type is also switched to whole number. Okay. Now, we have a column of dates over here. Uh, we also will need to create another worksheet, which I'll call calendar. And I'm going to create all dates over here right from the very first date of my data set, which is 1st of April, to the last date of my data set, which is 30th of June. So 1st of 
April 2015 I'm gonna do a plus one drag this all the way down to June I, I don't need those I simply am gonna select this convert this into a table under table tools design I'll give it a name called calendar so calendar name has already been taken apparently it's already there so uh, what I do is let's just say calendar one is what I call it and um, power pivot I say add to the data model so I get a calendar one table over there once again I don't need the timestamp so I choose my date format as this now I simply establish a relationship between the sales data date column and the calendar date column I go to create relationship there calendar one dates if I go to manage relationship it says there's one active relationship between the date column of the sales data worksheet and the dates column of the calendar one worksheet okay looks like we're good to go so now I go to pivot table I click on pivot table over there new worksheet is where, my, where I want my data to come up uh, workbook query is not needed now I need to select month I do not have a month column anywhere so I'll have to create one in the calendar table if I go back to manage right there I can create a month column by saying format calendar one dates to appear in MMMM this is similar to the text function in Excel I right click over here rename let's call this month I close that window now in the calendar table to the right hand side there will be a month um, field that will appear which I drag to my filter area section and from the sales data table I drag the name to my row labels okay so if I see here you'll actually get to see all the months listed April June and May now unfortunately this is not appearing in the order in which I'd like it to be since my financial year starts in April it should be April May and then June this is alphabetical for now now what I can do to work around this problem is that in the calendar worksheet itself I'll create uh, another table wherein I'll specify what the sort order should be so I call this April here May here June here and the order should be 1 2 and 3 I select this convert this as well into a table and say sort underscore order is its name I go to the power pivot I say add to the data model once I get this over here I now establish a relationship between the month column of the calendar table with the month column of the sort order table now what I could do is uh, I can actually bring over the s these numbers from the sort order table into the calendar table over here by writing a function called related wherein I say that get me the sort order column from the get me the sort order column from the sort order table there right click I'll simply rename this to sort order ok now why are we doing this just one second to recap I'm doing all of this only so that I can in the report filter drop down see the months in the order of April May and then June which is not appearing right now right now it's April June May which is alphabetical so I can go back to the power pivot window and now what I could do is I can say sort by column select the column to be sorted by and the column by which it is sorted so I want to sort the month column by what by the sort order column over here once I do that on the face of it nothing changes over here I close the power pivot window I can now hide this worksheet I don't need to use that anymore I go back to sheet 1 if I now go to the drop down over here you'll actually see the order change to April May and then June the way the way I exactly wanted it now the numbers which I've got over here for the YTD as I've shown you over here have all come with the help of a power pivot formula that I've written which you can see in the workbook that you can download from the link that appears in this video I just wanted to show you as to what's the process for actually first de-pivoting via the power query transferring that data to the power pivot establishing a relationship and thereafter the formula has to be written from the excel file that you can download um, I hope you enjoyed watching this short video